I'm going to talk about another treatment for giardiasis. As we all know, giardia is a protozoal intestinal parasite that infects the dogs and cats that we're interested in, as well as other species, including humans. It causes both subclinical and clinical infections. The subclinical infections are more likely and more common to occur in adult dogs and cats. Even though they're infect infected, they have no uh, um, clinical signs compatible uh, uh, with the disease. And the kittens and puppies, on the other hand, are more likely to develop clinical infections characterized by the uh, diarrhea, weight loss, and just unthrifty appearance that we have all seen in the shelter environment. Giardia infections are most common in dogs and cats housed um, in, in a dense situation, such as uh, shelters, kennels, and catteries. And it especially affects shelters um, during kitten season when, when the uh, population, the shelter population swells with the huge influxes of kittens um, uh, into the shelter, leading oftentimes to very crowded conditions and compounding stress and precipitating transmission of something like Giardia. We all can agree that uh, Giardiasis is a notorious bane for shelters, especially uh, um, those that are struggling to stay within capacity of for care. So uh, just so we all get on the same page, as this is important for the treatment that we'll be discussing, the transmission of Giardia is uh, by the fecal oral route. Um, and this uh, includes cysts that are shed in feces from infected animals. And these cysts are very infective. And when cysts in fecal contaminated environments are ingested, they are release trophozoites into the small intestine and the trophozoites produce more cysts that are then shed intermittently and very erratically in the feces of the infected animal and perpetuates the cycle as more animals are exposed to these cysts in the environment. So the pre-patent period, uh, which is the time between cyst ingestion and cyst shedding, is five to 16 days. So it's sort of surprising that, it's, that it can be that long. Uh, these cysts, unfortunately, are very durable and can survive for months, in, particularly in wet, cool environments. Um, they do desiccate when they are shed into environments that are much more um, hot and dry. But fortunately, the cysts, unlike other durable pathogens that we dread, such as parvovirus, the cysts are um, easily killed by disinfectants that we commonly use in shelters, including the bleach products and the quats, trifecta, and Excel. Both diagnostic testing, which I'm not going to get into because that's a whole other uh, dilemma about uh, for Giardia, but both diagnostic testing and treatment is recommended only for dogs and cats that are symptomatic. In other words, we shouldn't be screening asymptomatic dogs and cats in the shelter environment just to see if they are or are not shedding Giardia cysts. The thing to keep in mind about treatment is that the primary goal is resolution of diarrhea, not necessarily complete elimination of infection. And the most recommended treatment of choice for dogs and cats is fenbendazole or Panicure which has to be dosed once daily for five to seven days. And none of us have fun administering Panicure to uh, dogs and cats. Now, the second line choice is metronidazole. And unfortunately, that has to be given twice daily for an, uh, a week also. And then it's recommended to combine both fenbendazole and metronidazole together as a combination therapy for those cases that do not resolve after initial treatment with either of these drugs alone. alone. And that's because the drugs act by different mechanisms to kill um, cysts. So they may have a synergistic um, action, uh, killing action, when combined together in the same animal. And there's also adjunctive therapy. In addition to the drugs, 
There's some um, other important points that are frequently forgotten or overlooked, and that is we have to treat all the in-contact animals. So we're frequently treating kittens and puppies, and they come in as batches, and they're housed as batches. So we need to treat all of them regardless of which one has diarrhea and which was, doesn't. Another very important overlooked part, uh, part of the treatment plan is bathing. The cysts that are shed in the feces attach to the perianal area. They get attached to the hair coat. And the animals can become reinfected as they self-groom their cyst-contaminated coats, or they become a source of infection to uh, uh, their, their housemates who, uh, who groom them. So they should be bathed daily, which is a nightmare, or at least every other day during the seven-day treatment period. So if we are not good at removing cysts from the environment shed by the infected animals, this leads to reinfection. So we need to be very diligent about removal of feces from surfaces using our shelter disinfectants and consider you know, using disposable litter boxes for kittens so that you can just throw them away every day and start fresh with an uncontaminated box. And then don't forget about daily changes and disinfection of bedding and bowls and all the enrichment items before you recycle them back into use. So treatment set success is truly defined as resolution of diarrhea. But it is our standard practice to determine if cyst shedding has also stopped. And when the, the most recommended diagnostic test to evaluate whether the treatment has eliminated cyst shedding is to use the zinc sulfate centrifugation flotation testing. And unfortunately, this has to be performed three days in a row after you uh, have completed the treatment protocol because the cysts are shed very intermittently and erratically so you can't declare an animal as cured as defined by cyst shedding unless you have negative two, at least two negative tests in a row. So Giardia treatment is certainly very challenging and problematic in the shelter environment. The drugs themselves are challenging due to the requirement for multiple doses. They do not taste good to the dogs and cats. Uh, Fenbendazole generally requires large volumes um, at, the, at the 50 milligram per kilogram dose. Um, uh, metronidazole is associated with frequent hypersalivation and short-term anorexia with, um, after administration. And while fenbendazole or Panacure is relatively safe, metronidazole has a narrow margin of safety. Uh, doses higher than 25 mg per kilogram or dosing for more than seven days can cause neurotoxicity and liver dysfunction, especially in kittens and puppies. So in addition to concerns for the drugs, for the animals themselves, Giardia treatment is challenging and problematic for the shelter staff to the treatment failures as manifested by persistent diarrhea at the end of the treatment cycle, and cyst shedding is common, as we all know. It's a very common treatment failure scenario. But these treatment failures are really not necessarily due to the failure of the drug itself to kill the cysts and trypozo uh, trypozoites. It's rather an, a failure associated with inability of staff to give the full course of medication because of the difficulty in giving these drugs to the animals themselves. And it's caused by reinfection, rapid reinfection by ingestion of cysts in the hair coat and the environment because the staff don't have limitations with regard to daily bathing and maybe having a daily uh, a changeover of environmental um, housing. Certainly giving bad tasting medication orally once or twice a daily for a week and daily bathing is a frustrating struggle for staff and very stressful for the animals themselves. So is there not some other treatment regimen that we can discover that is more successful not only in curing the GRD infection, but for both the staff and the animals from an a welfare uh, means too. So secnitazole, which is in the same drug class as metronidazole, is used for treatment of geodiasis in people. 
And the beauty of this drug is that treatment with a single dose is as effective as multiple doses of metronidazole, achieving cure rates of 95 to 100% in children. So this single dose drug would be a great solution to the treatment challenges associated with fenbendazole and metronidazole in the shelter environment. But are there any studies that show the efficacy of secnidazole in treating um, dogs and cats? Well, Dr. Stacy Cannon did some research and searching, and she found a secnidazole trial in cats conducted by uh, veterinarians at a university in Brazil and reported in the literature in 2011. So the objective of this trial was to determine the efficacy of single-dose secnidazole in eliminating cyst shedding in cats infected with Giardia. Eighteen cats participated in this um, limited-scope trial. They all had naturally acquired Giardia infections. Seven cats less than one year of old age, 11 cats greater than one year of age. Some of the cats had diarrhea, some did not, and they were all housed individually. These 18 cats were treated with secnidazole using the human dose of 30 milligrams per kilogram once, administered orally as a liquid suspension in water. Um, a CBC and chemistry panel were performed on some of the cats uh, before treatment and five days afterward uh, to check for any liver or renal uh, dysfunction from this drug. And uh, cyst shedding was evaluated by the zinc sulfate flotation method on days six, seven, and eight following treatment. So hypersalivation, just like with metronidazole, did occur in 11 of the 18 cats, and it persisted for about three to five minutes immediately after dosing. Uh, four of the 18 cats did have a two-day period of anorexia, and then they recovered from that. All the cats that had diarrhea had resolution of the diarrhea within eight days. There were no changes in red or white blood cell counts or liver or renal chemistry values except for one asymmetric adult cat that had a mild uh, increase in um, ALT. So this was a limited scope study, 18 cats. Um, it, so you can really look at it as a pilot study they conducted to determine proof of principle about the use of secnidazole as an alternative treatment for giardiasis, at least in cats. And another limitation is not all the infected cats had clinical disease. And remember, the primary reason we treat is to resolve the clinical disease, not to resolve the cyst shedding. In addition, they did not compare um, the secnidazole uh, results to cats treated with metronidazole using the, st um, the uh, standard uh, dosing regimen. But I think from this study, uh, we can conclude that uh, sing a single dose of secnidazole may be very effective and safe in eliminating clinical disease and cyst shedding in giardia infected cats, at least. But we need a lot more studies to evaluate the pharmacolo uh, pharmacological properties of this drug in dogs and cats, really to determine what is the most effective dose and will one dose truly work in a larger number of animals. So we need those clinical and field trials in shelter environment uh, with large numbers of symptomatic dogs and cats to determine the true efficacy and safety of this drug. It has many advantages for shelter, single dosing, reduced cost because of single dosing, uh, increased size compliance and safety handling the animals because they only have to give the dose once. Certainly is less stressful for the animals, so it's, it's best for their welfare. And if it works this well with a high cure rate, then we'll have reduced cyst contamination of the environment, so maybe we won't have the reinfection problem. And <laughs> We need to consider the use of this drug for treatment of cats seized and, uh, from large-scale hoarding cases that Dr. Pollock introduced to you yesterday. And remember, she found through testing of cats from these uh, large-scale hoarding uh, scenarios that more than 50% were infected with Giardia. So how nice would it be to add one single dose of secnidazole to our intake protocol, where all cats get dosed once with secnidazole considering that more than one out of every two likely are infected with uh, Giardia.
And this is, I'm going to wind up with a little bit of a cost comparison between metronidazole as we currently use it and secnidazole, uh, particularly secnidazole. And the prices for secnidazole are based on, on those provided by Wedgwood Pharmacy. Um, so I've provided um, some prices either per mil for the suspensions or per tablet or capsule um, for both drugs. And you can see that secnidazole is more expensive per mil or per capsule. But what about when you look at how much you spend based on body weight of the patient, considering that metronidazole, given at 25 mg per kg twice daily for seven days, versus secnidazole, given at 30 mg per kg once. And so here is where the cost reduction really fleshes out when you start um, looking at the total cost per uh, per patient, and the secnidazole certainly is the more um, uh, cost-effective approach. So it looks like this may be an, a, some relief for us in uh, handling giardiasis, and uh, it would be great for the shelter environment uh, because of its single-dose um, properties and uh, more cost-effective. <laughs> 